a head early. Mm -hmm. uh, so it'll be interesting to watch as these two square off. Uh, and again, hopefully we're in for a series that can go the distance tonight. And here we go with our first comps. 52 Splash Dooley, E-Leader on the side of your mom with the Forge Wiper Bamboo Jr. from Limeade. Uh, yeah, a look that we're probably used to seeing out of Limeade as of recent, of course, the Lillian Jr., but uh, you might be surprised to see Pika on the Wiper. Going to be playing that heavy QR thing, of course, Char viewers, probably about the same thing that Arashi normally does. So uh, you'll get to see that come in here as well. Yeah, Pika's been really doing the wiper lately, one of the people to invest in. We can see it shreds that crab beautifully on the side. Gonna use this Ultra Stamp to try to secure the 52 kill with a bit of a help from Shiny. Gonna be able to get it. Just throwing the hammer for a bit of extra pressure. Should be able to quickly take out this Wave Breaker. Another player. And oh, one more shot can get the healer here. The wiper ain't take fighting against him, but gets a nice pick to open up the map. And already three down here for your mom. We're starting to see the clams come online for Limeade as now they're starting to move forward a little bit more. Shiny in position here as well, getting a few more in. And we're already seeing the amount of presence that they're building up here. You see all of this blue ink, or at least it was there for a while, but the second that it starts to go away, now you see your mom come right back in, starting to take back control of this area underneath their basket, forcing Limeade away, but a beautiful push down the 32 to kick things. Yeah, that's a great push to start the match off. Flymate doing a great job with the opening power, immediately finding a snipe, though, as well as another player going down. Lily's going to have to use the bubble early to try to stall for time. Going to be trying to hold it as much as possible, but power keeps finding kills. The Crab and Whale are both being used early, at least. Not going to have to deal with those specials on defense, but with Lily down, this is going to be a little bit difficult for them to regroup. Yeah, interestingly, that bubbler goes out, but it doesn't actually be that effective because there's not a lot of people also following up with Limeade. It looks like Pika coming in off of the flank here. We can't quite see on this barrier, uh, but it doesn't seem like there's a lot of members of your mom around that are able to actually get clans in. They're only going to get a power clan plus three down to 71. Not the kind of push you'd like to see. Didn't quite have the same amount of sustained presence that we saw from Limeade. Oh, that's a nice flick from power. And while Limeade has gotten the good first push, they're struggling to find a nice foothold in mid as Powers Elyr has been putting up a lot of pressure here. One of the splashes is going to have to jump out, though, and Limeade might be starting to find an opening in the middle of the map. Already that bubbler going out. You see, and now Limeade playing around that. Start to try to find something here. That is Pika again forward. Has that wiper, shreds that crab almost instantly. You're not allowed to do anything. But all the meanwhile, your mom looks like they were collapsing around the position of Limeade in mid. Pika forced to back away. Now kind of panic popping this ultra stamp. Not going to get much value for it here. And it looks like your mom is starting to stabilize mid. We'll see if they can find an opening as they look to make another push. And that is a huge kill on the junior, not only getting a pick, but setting them up in the perfect grab spot, which is going to result in a big snowball as they find another kill. The bamboo is low. They're going to jump a power clam in, which I think is close enough. Yes, it is enough. They score two power clams. I didn't even realize they had a second. And here comes the next crab out for their team, and they're starting to get a good hold here. Krem goes down. Pika's going to have to find a pick on a mid, but Hunky's able to clean that up. The push is at least stopped, but Limeade is still struggling, having to use another special just to get out of their spawn. Yeah, a lot of mid control here right now for your mom. Again, they're stabilizing this, and any time there's that much mid control, Power's going to have free reign on making sure that he doesn't necessarily feel pressured here at all. Very methodical with this e litter looking to try to pick members off, and of course, there's another one down onto Pika. We're seeing Limeade trying to make another push, trying to break back into mid, trying to get something done, but it looks like it's all falling apart now. Grim falling out down as well. It's just not quite going to be enough for them here, and your mom continues to hold on to mid. They've got a minute left to play. It will be interesting to see if they'll be able to hold on for uh, the entire rest of the day. Um, but that's already three down. We see Pika, the last remaining power, honestly holding his ground very well against aggressive weapons. It's leaving Pika in the corner right now. He's going to have to come back while their push is happening, but he's located. Going to get picked off really early, and power is a few clamps. Not enough for the knockout, but would love to extend that lead just a little bit further. Here's Hope with another two, but I think they're not going to be able to get that push in. That could have been a little bit more points, but Limeade able to defend it before it gets too bad. But power continues to find opening after opening pick in this match. 
And it's another two-down situation for Limeade. It looks like they just don't quite have the ability to actually break back in. Looks like someone's trying to slip through here. I think that's Lily going back to the far left. Of course, is called out. Shiny trying to challenge on top of top mid here. Someone on Limeade has to find a way to open up the space, has to find a way to break through your mum's stronghold in the middle of this map. And it looks like they might have found their opportunity as Hunty goes down here. Booyah Bomb going up in the air from Prim, thrown right towards that crowd, but Lily goes down all of the same. Overtime force with a power claim on the map, but with only two members up for Limeade, they're just not going to have the ability to get this in. Pika now is the last one up as the jump's trying to come in, but there's enough members of your bump around to secure themselves the game. The power claim will despawn, and that's game one. Yeah, really good play from your mom once they set up. Had a bit of a shaky start, but Scorch is a very long-range favorite stage, and it was very clear that once your mom set up, they had a good plan, and Limeade really struggled not having too many ways to quickly enter map. They only really had that Whale and Booyah Bomb, and Forge's Booyah is a very expensive special, so their inability to retake quickly definitely showed there as Power was able to find openings before they could get their opportunity to walk back into the middle of the map. And that's one of the things, right, that I was even pointing about there for quite a while, is that with an E-leader playing a little bit more of a passive position while there's still complete control of mid, I mean, there's virtually nothing you can do to actually challenge that E-leader unless you're running Tenor Missiles, right? Uh, or unless you're running an E-leader of your own, of course. So that position is going to be so strong and it's going to be so difficult for Limeade to actually find a coordinated way to break back in. In a game, I'm going to talk about it because we still have to compare this game to Splatoon 2. They don't have armor. There's not a coordinated way to actually move in when they don't have things like Tenor Missiles or Ink Armor to actually disrupt the enemy team and actually get themselves an advantage uh, to try to perform some of these retakes. It's why you're seeing longer and longer holds of zones, more knockouts in zones with uh, lockouts galore much the same of what we were seeing there on Scorch Bridge. Yeah, and TC Museum is going to be a bit of an interesting one. I mentioned the long-range favoring here. However, on this map, once the tower gets near the second checkpoint or so, it becomes a lot harder for Eater to do too much. There's not as many nice angles over there. And so if they can manage to get the tower far enough, I think this could be a much better map for Cherry Limeade. It all depends if they have the aggressive power to get there. Well, that's one of the things too, right? As you're talking about the maybe slightly skirmisher role that right now Pika is trying to play with his QR wiper. It's not going to be all about what angles can you actually approach from to try to create an advantage. Can you surprise your opponent? Can you drop from a location that they're not expecting? And perhaps that's the case here as both Shiny and Pika are opening on that far right side of the map already trying to challenge the opposing flat. Immediately going to get dropped on, called out by your mom, and instantly punished. Yeah, that was a good attempt for the opening there. I like the two-person on the right side, but I'm not sure if Wiper Bamboo was the best pair. Has a bit of a tricky time in getting people in a few situations there, and that just didn't work out quite well. The crab's being used early, but the C Junior goes down. Gonna be keeping the Waybreaker out of the fight. Another kill, and this could be really dangerous. The T-Tech could push up really far, but I think the Bamboo's gonna be able to hold it for now. We're seeing your mom get points relatively uncontested Power going to opt to be the tower rider for this part of the push as we get closer to the second checkpoint. That first check cleared, and there's so much control right now for your mom in this plat area, but now there's an opening. Setu goes down, Limeade rushing all three in this direction, and continuing to try to build up their presence towards mid. Looks like Grim is going to go down in the process, but of course, Pika's already on the front lines here. That Wavebreaker is going to fall as well. Pika charging right towards this plat area, and now gets called out, gets punished. Now all of a sudden, Limeade doesn't have an opening, and Power can just rain on down towards this tower. Beautifully well done on the defensive hold at the first check, which we do not often see here on Museum. Yeah, Limeade, unable to set up on the right side well enough, gets picked off really early. Some nice snipes and mine placement from Power was key in that defense. And we're seeing Yamam already set up in the front. They don't have the crab at the ready quite yet, but they do have a try strike so they're gonna be trying to hold on to use that second crab later past the second checkpoint. Pika in mid, gonna be able to get set to from behind though, and trade with Hunty, power goes down, and the checkpoint wasn't even clear. That's actually not that great a push at all. And we've seen both teams surprisingly struggle to hold the tower on the right side. 
And again, you'll notice a large part of that. Power was the furthest person forward riding the tower for your mom. There wasn't any control of flat at all. And so when Limeade comes back in off the respawns, they're able to come right on back through this. Now you see the positions that Limeade is taking with Pika and Krim already so far for now challenging power there as well, opening up so much room to clear that first check and now likely even going to be the second check as well. There's power trying to tap start. Uh, or sorry, that's shiny, of course, cap shotting with the bamboo. That makes a lot more sense. But already, all of this coming together here uh, right now for Jerry Limeade. Down to the th this third check, still so much space ahead of them. Pika gonna throw another hammer. Finally, they get punished. Finally, the fights go the way of Yamum. But a very strong push here for Limeade. Yeah, very nice setup from Krim, getting that top side of the map. If you can manage to get up there, it's really difficult. But when you get there, it's so good to maintain control. And ooh, I don't like both crabs being used this early. Typically, you don't want to have two crabs at the same time because one is usually effective enough to do the job. And now they're not going to have any on their push. Pika is also behind them, bullying the dually. We're seeing Yamum still set up here, but it's going to be a bit tricky missing their main front line to try to clear the second checkpoint. Okay, here's Funty and Hope looking to try to find an opening. They haven't had control of Plat so far, but it looks like the second checkpoint will fall nonetheless. Power dropping back below on this tower, but there's Pika. Surprise, popping right over top of the spinner and is able to take care of a few there of your mom. Limeade is going to be able to find the wipeout here and now pushing back through mid. But again, expect to see this two or three more times back and forth. What was that? Throws the hammer even in the face of danger. Able to take care of one. Lime looking to push this tower right back. We have a 1v1 between the two chargers. Shiny gonna up to hold this bottom right side. Just leave the tower here, not worry too much, and just allow people to regroup, allow his team to maintain map control, and stall the other team as long as possible. He'll be using that killer whale, that auto bomb, gonna get a nice kill on a set two. And right now, they just wanna keep the tower on the right side. That's the easiest spot to keep there. They'll get the special advantage because they are in tower control. So as long as they can keep it over here, they can burn more resources for the enemy team. Speaking of which, there goes the crab right away to try to stop the push. But so far, they are struggling to get back in. We're finally seeing Yamum get some map control. They need a clean kill on Krim and Shiny. They do get one, but not the other. Shiny is still stalling for time in the corner. Gonna be able to get a killer whale without going down. And Yamum is slowly falling behind as Cherry Limeade are set up on the tower. And Yamum is running out of time. Now, Limeade here is cautiously pushing this one forward, right? They're not going all out. They're not going to fully go for this push if they can avoid it. But if there's an opportunity that presents itself, it's might as well. And now you're starting to see that with Pika going in, having that hammer, able to find that trade there. And they will maintain control when the clock hits zero, solidifying themselves game two. Yeah, Limeade showing that when they do get set up, your mom has a lot harder of a time being able to deal with them and they were able to maintain that aggressive position and rather than play to try to force it further ahead just played to do well enough to keep the tower in the spot they wanted to keep up the aggression and was just able to hold them on their plat for such a long time and that's exactly what you want to try to do, right? Uh, that is going to be the strongest location here on this map to try to get uh, a decent bit of a hold going. So, uh, yeah, impressive stuff there to Limeade, especially their shiny, just kind of holding down, poking out from wherever you want to. Uh, you were talking about that boo, bim, boo, maybe not having the best of angles, but Johnny isn't afraid of that at all. You know, they're just going to take care of business as per usual. Yeah, and we're getting on to Rainmaker Undertow Spillway. This is a very, very interesting map mode. It has two very split pushes, both of which have their own strengths and weaknesses. The left side push takes longer, but is generally more favorable terrain for attackers, while the right side push, while very vulnerable, also is extremely fast, good for getting a checkpoint or a breakaway if people rotate too much to the other side very back and forth once the rainmaker gets out of mid it's all about a team trying to get as much of a push as they can and one of the things here at least so far with seems to be what i expect to be a rather explosive limeade right led by this qr wiper uh on the front lines you're probably going to see them take so much space probably 
likely favor the left push if I had to imagine, as Pika's trying to turn around that corner, right around that grading area, and start shooting right up into the spawn of the enemy team. Or even Pika might decide to go for the flank route entirely, a misdirection while the rest of the team goes the other way. Uh, we'll see what the game plan is here out of your mom, but power sticking with this E leader here, even on Rainmaker, expecting this to be rather fast paced. Yeah, only some small adaptions. We have Krim going to the machine instead of the Forge Pro, and we see a second splash coming out from your mom instead of going with the normal dually. Very interesting for Rainmaker. This is where I consider dually the strongest, but uh, Shiny is just kind of running it past, and I don't quite know what happened there, but. The Rainmaker is now all the way to the goal. Your mom has gone down trying to salvage the poor positioning. And now the stamp throw. Can this snipe the crab? No, just a little bit too far. But the Rainmaker is now running all the way to 40 as Lily walking forward is able to get all the way to 29 quite early. And it's just power. He's trying to stop the push and is going to be able to force the last member to jump out. But the damage has been done and Limeade with a very explosive opening. So that's the classic, uh, nine whole grains everybody says, hey, I don't care what you do as long as you do it fast. And that was the definition of doing something fast as Shiny looks like he's put, coming away with a heist, uh, just pushing that Rainmaker right on through there uh, to take care of business. Uh, and now it looks like a little bit <laughs> similar. <laughs> Wait. What the hell happened? What? <laughs> what even was that game? That wasn't even in the spectator mode. We're gonna need the replay for that one. <laughs> literally heisting the Rainmaker. What is with, what is with these folks? Really? Why, man? You gonna, you gonna just do this? <laughs> All right. You know, the spectator doesn't want to show it until they literally pick up the Rainmaker, but I, I'm guessing they had to have snuck through the left side of the map, somehow wasn't seen, and Lily was just able to grab and walk the Rainmaker a little bit further for the KO. That is, uh, not the way you want to lose that map, but... I mean, your mom's gonna have to shake it off. It happens. It's an unfortunate loss, but hopefully the next map could be a little bit better for them. And uh, Limeid is currently up 2-0 so far. They are looking pretty good. However, we are entering splat zones. If you need slow, defensive play styles that are good for the E leader, this is the mode for it. That being said, it's Makomar, one of the more flexible zones maps. I'm not sure if this was quite the map advantage that they might have wanted. But maybe it could be enough for your mom to make something happen here. Yeah, uh, we'll see. But of course, if you're thinking about things from uh, the perspective of your mom, right? You imagine you're playing a little bit slower. You're playing very area control in a lot of cases. So I imagine that you're just happy getting back to splat zones here in the first place right uh, a nice map where power can get set up plenty of room and plenty of locations for these crabs to get insane amounts of value we'll see if they can convert it here uh in this game four a little bit of a con switch from lime gonna be going with the tri slosher instead of the wiper this is one of the weaker qr and wiper maps in general so i think try is a smart pick here krim gonna opt to stick with the machine and Lily gonna go to the custom junior. A little bit of adaptions, but most part, same plan from Lime It. Try going over here to try to pick the splash, but so far, the opening looks like it is in a huge favor for your mom. There it is, three down already. And even though this wave breaker is gonna come out of Lily and still sticking around to try to find something, it looks like your mom is gonna have decent control of mid. And we'll see exactly what happens here is now the crab's going to continue shooting back forward that direction. Gonna be a lot for Lime to break back in, but they might have found an opening on their own stack already. Charging forward, trying to fight this uh, over the top of the zone. Vigo right in top of this inkjet already like though it's not gonna get a ton of value here not able to find much of anything and now the collapse back from your mom another one goes down we could try to hug this right now but it's taken down to the process here as well and things are falling apart here for limeade they just cannot quite find an opening yeah, limeade getting very brawly but this is where a lot of the shooters are going to thrive here able to get a good amount of picks and there's so little special so little time luckily shiny they're able to find two kills but unfortunately, the E-Leader takes them out. Lily's going to have to paint the zone. I don't think they can do it. They barely don't get it in time. And just as fast as a Rainmaker match happened one way, we just have the zones match happen the other. And your mom is back to tying up the scoreboard. And look, if this doesn't show you, 
that there is a distinct difference in the play styles of these two teams. I don't know what does. They literally both went 100 to 0 knockouts in two consecutive games, and they went either direction. The Splat Zones game went to the team that was favored towards holding a position with an E litter and having all of these splashes and all these frontline shooters maneuver around and try to make sure that they were swarming and engulfing Limeade, preventing them from even getting close to touching the zone. Meanwhile, in the Rainmaker game on Undertow that we saw literally two minutes ago, it was Limeade that was able to blitz down right ahead everything's going to plan and actually was playing that individualist play style was actually benefiting them quite well so watch the dichotomies of these play styles as we lean back into clam blitz which is something where you can get away with both of these different kinds of play styles right sometimes having that blitz style where you're going right forward towards that basket all barrel and towards at it is going to be beneficial on the flip side if you're playing defense trying to be calm and collected while you're holding mid and preventing your opponent from getting in. It's exactly what won your bum game one. Here we go, game five on Brinewater. We see yet another comp change on the side of Limeade. Oh, on both sides this time, we're seeing a 52 pick from each team respectively, and we're going back to the Vanilla Junior for the bubble, probably in front of the basket here. But this map, while it's much better for the flanks and aggressive playstyle that Limeade likes due to having one of the few actual flanks in the video game, Unfortunately, it is also one of the maps where E-Leader simply reaches from one spawn to the other. So I'd say it's a fairly even one to start out. And so far, Limeade is not wasting any time. There's that immediate bubble in front of the basket as they set up score. Pika throws a hammer in there, tries to find someone. Monkey is fighting, gets picked off. And wow, what an explosive start from Limeade, not wasting any time. Exactly what I'm talking about here. And now they're sticking around at least a little while longer literally taking until that bubbler actually goes down in of itself now finally they get collapsed around but a very reminiscent push of game one limeade pushes it down to the low 30s here as they're looking to try to get themselves an advantage early in this game now two down situation once more from your mom though they might be struggling to hold on to mid here if they're not careful set to already going in power confused on where precisely to actually try to look here uh is now set to goes right into this crap Looking to try to find an opening, but already Pika applying pressure, swimming right on up to power. Power's trying to have to fight here. This is exactly the chaos that Limeade wants to breed. You can see the power of that flank. Even if Pika wasn't able to find a kill, they just stalled for so much time. Three people had to rotate back. And by the time they dealt with them, they're already set up for a push. That being said, before the bubble can deploy, power is back to shut it down, setting up on the left side. And as strong as Bubble is on this map, Wave is equally devastating due to that small size and having Wave Breaker on this left side could be really devastating for them to push in. They're gonna have the Wave, they're gonna have the Crab, and they're trying to find an opening. The Crab gets immediately broken though. The Wiper manages to trade to be able to keep things going. Hunty is in front with all the clams to try to make a power. We're gonna see one of the Crab tanks dive in front, ignore the Bamboo just to shoot the block for a little bit. Finally gonna be able to get some setup here. He needs to take out this Junior. And your mom is getting set up for a push of their own with an immediate double power clam score. That's gonna be really good for them. Double power clam score, so much control of the middle of the map right now that they might be able to hold on to this for a little while longer. But notably, they don't have that big bubbler. And so this is gonna very quickly get collapsed on by Cherry Limeade. Good push from your mom, but wasn't quite good enough. Wasn't quite sustained enough to actually net themselves the lead here. But of course, anything can happen. We imagine this one's going to start stabilizing in mid. And it'll be interesting to see who's gonna find their opening first. A shiny storms forward. I don't know where he's going. Or sorry, they're going. Immediately is gonna get taken taken out there and now we'll see what else happens here crab tank up in the air and we're gonna... here as limates continue to try to create chaos oh and this is looking bad for your mom the only defender on the low ground and uh oh this is a score they have a lot of clams it's not gonna be enough for a knockout but it's gonna be pretty damn close to it that's gonna leave very little time uh, if you're your mom you gotta go like right now you have to move to get inside that big bubble but it looks like it's gonna be too late and that one push was enough for Limeade to secure another game win, and they are getting close to the five needed to take the set. I have to go back to the playstyle of my comrades at this point, right? Um, 
as I was pointing out time and time again, Limeade was running all over the map all of the time, oftentimes not being afraid to go in and take individual fights where they know that they can probably get into advantageous positions, right? You consider Pika charging forward towards power when there wasn't really anything other than just make sure power's distracted, right? That's all Pika's job really was, and they were successful in doing just that. Power couldn't actually open up into mid, and that allowed the rest of Limeade to have a little bit more breathing room to try to get something else done there. Likewise, we take a look at the other side. They're trying to play things a little bit more calm and collected. They'll slowly start building up their presence over time, but it looks like they were struggling because they didn't have as, after all, all of the initial claims go in, doesn't look like they had as strong of a sustained presence. I think that's one of the ways that this 52 gal is probably actually weaker than the splash or than, um, I don't know, maybe in some cases, even perhaps a little bit weaker on an individual basis than the junior, is that it doesn't, it's not gonna have as much sustain to provide for the rest of the team. You think the junior has that bubbler, you think the splash has that crab that can open up so many avenues for the team, whereas that killer whale doesn't really do quite the same. So, uh, of course, both teams ended up playing that weapon on that last map. But another thing to point out here is you're noticing these 52 gals come in, might not necessarily be it's all it's chalked up to, but of course we'll have to pay attention to that as we roll forward. Now, Tower Control Flounder here. One of the newer maps, Chara, and I, I don't even know what to say about this map because I certainly can't get this one figured out. Oh, is that a bow? And a Nautilus. A bow. Okay, power. Busting out the counter pick. I don't know, maybe this is a Flounder thing. I do think the Tri-Stringer is actually really good on this map, but I haven't really seen anyone try it too much, so this is going to be interesting for sure. Meanwhile, Limeade opting to increase their aggression. Nautilus and two Sloshers is absolutely going to go into getting kills in order to make things happen. And so far, Limeade has a very nice setup early on. Inkjet is going to be very nice. On this map, you can leave the recall in a safer spot while descending to the low ground, and you're able to recall to a much safer position. It makes it very strong on this map. And we're seeing Limeade get through the next checkpoint really early on. Power is trying to find some AoE shots into the limited space that Limeade has. And so far, it seems to be working at slowly opening things up right now. The, sh the tower getting all the way to 29 as your mum slowly starts to find a way in. There's only one player left remaining, and they finally go down with your mum being able to defend, but definitely a devastating push. Not too bad here. It's mostly the third checkpoint and later where things get a bit difficult, but for the most part, it's still a very strong push. By the way, I want to call this out. Beautiful play by Hunty there, hopping over top of the wall, also trying to play around that wall, use it as cover, and then she's not afraid to just jump up, actually get something done towards the tower. Well done. A large part of the reason why that push was stopped. Now, peak a flank angle, able to find at least two here uh, onto your mom, and now it's only one up here for Limey. It's going to be this Nautilus right now. We're going to actually find a way to take care of business here. And now there's the Ink Storm going out. Three down situation, though, for your mom. They were continually trying to feed back in here, continuing to try to find an angle, and they just couldn't quite do it. Mid going back to the favor of Limeade and expect to start to see them barreling forward. But now Shiny goes down. Pika up in this Ink Jet might not be able to find much of anything here. Big <laughs> shot in a very awkward 1v1. Uh, hope falling off the map there, unfortunately. But Limeade may nonetheless continuing to push this tower. Able to effectively find an assist before going down and trading with power. And so far, so good. Limeage has been able to maintain this aggression. We're seeing a lot of aggressive power from the side of your mom. They're going to have to be able to use that on their pushes as well. They need to clean up this machine. It's going to be a trade less than optimal. They're going to lose the try strike, which would have been really helpful. And right here, we see Pika already taking advantage of the map geometry. He's already back behind them. And now your mom's going to have to circle back, trying to clear the try slosher away. Now the Nautilus is there. There's multiple people on their zone. Your mom is able to stabilize at least. But they're losing a bit of time. They're going to have to burn a few specials. But this crab tank is in a perfect position to get the picks there. They're going to be able to put some pressure. They see the Nautilus early. Going to wall it out before they can even threaten to get an early kill. And they should be able to clear this checkpoint before Limeade is able to regroup. 
This set you guys said he was retired. I don't believe it for one second. You can't just pull something out like that when you're retired. Those old bones don't move fast enough. But now, Limeade, another two-down situation. They're starting to just move forward here even more. And Setsu's got another grab on top of the tower, looking to try to go right towards Krim. And Shiny takes care of both of them. Hunty in position here as well. It's the lead change for your mom. They're looking for the knockout here in addition. That grab tank putting in so much pressure from Hope. Now, as Limeade is trying to come in back from their spawns, triple strike trying to come out out here get something done set you hopping up there trying to challenge this as well lily trying to jump on top of this tower and we'll just stall it out for a moment your mom once again ties up the series yeah i think lime just panicked a bit on the defense both of their mid-range weapons were dropped typically where you'd see something like the tri slasher go it left no room for the short range weapons and they ended up getting way too clumped together and a single crab tank was able to shut down that second defense getting your mum the win. We are now 3-3 now. Both teams needing two matches left. This has been back and forth. We've seen a lot of knockouts, but still a close match, which is pretty strange. It's just the play styles both teams have, once they get them going, seem to really handle the other teams well. It's just been a battle of which team is able to set up their strategy most effectively, and that's very a lot based on the maps and modes we've been playing. And I think it's going to be a bit more difficult here with Rainmaker Sturgeon Shipyard. Now this, one of the best E-Leader map modes in the game. One of the best Charger map modes in the game in general. And it's going to be really difficult to make a push against the E-Leader. We're going to have to see what Limeade has to deal with it. But, alternatively, there's plenty of opportunities for this Wiper to get flanks. Right? There's plenty of opportunities to try to approach from different angles. So even though the E-Leader can have quite a bit of a presence, uh, you know, on top of that spinner or even trying to look, shake back your own court, you have to imagine that with the fast and aggressive playstyle we've been seeing out of Limeade so far, they're still going to have plenty of opportunities on this map to get something done, and let alone it being Rainmaker, which of course remember or maybe you don't remember because it happened so fast that undertow game right how quickly limeade was able to find any kind of an opening to try to convert it into an actual lead and then eventually to the knockout itself uh impressive stuff we'll see if they can pull it out here again and clinch themselves match point yeah here we go and now Power is going to switch to the splash. Forget the E-Leader thing I mentioned, and Setu is gonna be on okay. the bow. Was Power on the what, bow last time, or did I mix them up the whole time? No, 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 no. I'm pretty sure you're right that Power was on it. I guess Setu was like, wait a minute, I actually play <laughs> bow, so like we could actually do this. But you're already seeing here, oh. Limeade tries to make an advantage, tries to make an opening, but they're all clustered in the same exact location. That crab tank gonna make quick work of them overall. And so now it looks like your mom might be able to come back in the mid, but no, gotta be a little bit careful with some of the members of Limeade quick off of their QR, now gonna be trying to just dive right on back in. That's Pika creating a distraction here. And again, your mom, based off of that destruction, wasn't able to take back control of mid. They're trying to fight for this once again in neutral. Yeah, we had a classic crab moment, but even with that, Rainmaker hasn't been able to go super far. We're seeing the regroups happen pretty handily, and so far, your mom is able to set up. They clearly want to push this right side. They have the Trizuka ready. Rainmaker is nearby, but they need to be able to secure that top right position. They're going to pop the Zuka to do it. Shiny not aware of it. Going to get killed early. The Zuka going to be putting some pressure onto the checkpoint. Lily going to pop the bubble to stall. Pika is trying to find an opening behind them. Not able to get anything off quite yet. Krim is gonna be able to walk straight ahead of power though, as all the defensive players move out of the way and they're able to take him out. The other thing that's critical about what Krim did there was paint the path right in front of that Rainmaker. That Rainmaker had nowhere to go. It couldn't think about getting to the checkpoint because there was no one actually providing paint support for your mom to make that push happen. Instead, those players were engaged in the fight a little bit further on. As soon as Lyman cleans up the fight, that Rainmaker has nowhere to go, assuming that it's not painted. So well done there. Now, Rainmaker resets right off the map as soon as that spinner starts to come back up. But now we'll see what actually happens here as this is starting to stabilize just a bit more. Pika, though, wants to destabilize it immediately, jumping in. Look at it, just dive right down. Might actually try to take a trip down to the bottom himself. Uh, but no, not going to happen that time around for them. We'll see here what happens. Limeade's still struggling to actually find a solid push, a break into the opponent's court. 
Yeah, a lot of Rainmaker stall, but not a lot of points happening. Pika gonna walk straight in with the Wiper, find a double, getting in mid with the Ultra Stamp, gonna throw it, unfortunately, the Spinner, keeping him away from that third kill. But Limeade able to set up quite well here. They're going to be looking for the extra kill onto the splash. They do. And this is a really nice setup for them. And we're going to see Pika putting pressure onto the Rainmaker. Shiny as well in front. The stamp being thrown again. The Wiper just gets stamps that fast. And which side is Limeade going to opt to push? It looks like they're opting to push the low ground. But Shiny gets picked off before their teammates can help them. I don't know how Hunty ended up finding that shark, but once again, brilliant. Playing around this objective and making sure that it gets stopped. That said, it is going to be Cherry Limeade that gets themselves the lead, at least for the moment. But this is still sitting on a razor's edge. Now Lily moves it just a little bit further forward, down to 65, but the pop is going to come through for once again. That Wiper with so much object damage, now is going to be taking the Rainmaker themselves and able to drop that one down on that checkpoint. Well done for Limeade. Will they be able to sustain this? Doesn't quite look like it's going to be the case. It's shiny He's starting to back away. Now we're seeing the jump out from Krim. Well done to try to make sure that Limeade can maintain control of mid. Now Krim going back up here. Puts the wall up. Trying to make sure that no one can approach from this side. Is able to get one in the process. But it's op an opportunity for someone to start coming forward. That's Hunty looking for one. And is able to find the wipe out there. Looks like Limeade was getting a little bit disjointed. But uh, there's a lot of work for your mom to actually get back to their check. Yeah, it might not have been too many points on the board there, but still a huge checkpoint clear. And more importantly, that push took so much time off the table that now your mom has to take a long time just to get started. We're already down to a minute left in the game, and we still have to go through a checkpoint, which means Cherry Limeade's going to have a lot of time. It looks like Power is going to opt to break it to the left side. I don't think any of Limeade is there to stop it, and this is dangerous. Even if the spinner weren't dropped, you can just jump it over the gap in order to get the lead. However, it looks like Cherry Limeade's able to slow it down. Lily's gonna be popping a bubble and they will be able to stop it for now. Gonna grab the Rainmaker to make sure no one sneaks it around and they just wanna get it off this right side. Secure a little bit more time, but they can't let a push like that happen again without the checkpoint. That would have been enough for the lead. That was the other thing though. Lily threw a bomb, random bomb, and it connected with Setu. Setu went down there, and all of a sudden, even though your mom was able to find the pop, they weren't able to find much follow-up after it. And now, with just six seconds left to go, Lily's just gonna sit, be quite comfortable stalling here on this side of the map. Power tries to approach, but it's not gonna be enough. And Limeade's gonna hang on. There are now one game away from clinching this set. Yeah, Lime did an excellent job on their push. They were able to keep the enemy team in their side for so long. And despite how many players went down, they were able to not only get one, two, three, but four separate grabs on the Rainmaker in one push, inching it further every single time until they got the points they needed to secure that game. You know, it's one of the things we were talking about. Uh, all of the, you know chaos that Limeade is just trying to infuse into this game. But in addition, they're actually doing a solid job as well of holding that location and sustaining pushes, right? We saw it on Clam Blitz where they're able to have enough of a presence to come on back in with the clams. In some cases, that's because they have the big bubbler or something of that nature. Uh, and then in addition, they're able to come right on back uh, in Rainmaker here with enough players around playing on an individual basis and now they're the ones that are able to convert them so well done here but back to Splat Zone's Hagglefish Market this one's going to be tried and true here and probably likely is going to go back to favoring Kimbom I imagine power is going to go back over to the E leader here we'll see the double splash whether it's a T-Tech or a normal shot probably doesn't matter but at the end of the day, this is going to be where Yamum really thrives. Yeah, this is going to be dangerous here. Mako was already really bad for Limeade, and this is a much more favorable zones map for Yamum. If there was any map for them to gain momentum back, this would be it. But on the bright side, I would say this is at least one of the better wiper maps. So maybe this can allow Limeade to stick with a the comp they're a bit more comfortable, a bit more experienced in, and that might be enough to give them the edge. We'll have to see, though, as we are on match point. Limeade one game away from getting the set done and we're seeing the return of the Forge Pro and the Custom Junior not too much there and there's power back on the E-leader he is known for and we'll have to see if that can be a big enough factor to win them the set. 
We'll see here where all of these openings decide to land. Power looking for some cheeky jump shots to kick things off here on this one. Not going to find anything all the way. The main thing that Mon's going to have to be worried about are these flank angles, which Power is already covering, pivoting to both sides, able to find one on top of Prim, and now is able to get the assist here with Shiny. Lily, the only one up here in zone, going to get taken down in the process. And so even though Limeade was able to get a few points on the board here early, they're starting to move back. Ooh, no, actually, wait a minute. The QR comes in, the jumps come in, and Limeade actually able to sustain this push after getting a few other cheeky splats back the other direction. Yeah, your mom not actually able to get the zone back despite the amount of kills they got. And that's always very devastating on zones. The timer's ticking down. Power is trying to pick off Krim. They're going to pop that Booyah Bomb to stay alive. Shiny finally goes down. They have the double crab ready to push back in. Set to use theirs. But they need to kill this Wiper. Unfortunately, the Wiper picks off Power first. They have the crab, but they're going to have to wait for a regroup. And by then, Lime is going to have their specials. They're going to have one chance. Here comes the crab. It has to come up big. Not able to find a kill. Gets immediately shredded by the bombs. And we're seeing a zone battle. Krim goes down. They need to paint the objective. Square, paint, square. Here we go. It's not capped yet. There we go. Oh. Finally, the tri strike finishes off Lily. And that'll just be enough for the zone to be capped. But that was very dangerous there. And now, your mom has to hold for practically a knockout in order to make it happen. They have the Booyah Bomb at the ready. They're going to use that to start to open things up. Gonna throw it in there. We see an Ultra Stamp going for the Hail Mary throw over the wall. Doesn't find one this time, unfortunately. And Limeade kind of stuck in front of the zone right now. They need to get someone on the flank, and that someone will be Pika. They're on the side trying to find an opening. The Crab is able to turn and shoot them, but while they did that, Limeade capped the zone. You and already saw there as well. Grim going on the other flank, trying to create some more pressure on that side of the map as well. Now, Pika going down as well. Lime Aid, two-down situation, allows this crab to start getting a little bit more work done here for your mom. We'll see if Setsu can actually make much of a difference here, but now it's going to start to get challenged by the members of Cherry. Lime Aid looks like your mom was able to take back control of the zone, but now they'll be able to push through it as Lime Aid is actively trying to contest this with the Wavebreaker down. All of these members are still around, and now looks like they go two down once more. The last two Members backing away momentarily, looking to try to regroup to come on back in here. Still not going down without a fight, though. Oh, huge flank from Pika, but unfortunately, there's no one really pushing them with this team with them, which means they can force, they can just turn around. I can't even speak. They're going to be able to turn around and shut him down before the rest of their team comes in. And Pika just shredding the crabs over and over with the wiper. But unfortunately, there's very little time remaining. Power Ooh. finds a kill. It's just shiny. They have that killer will. And they're going to have to use that to push in. Here comes the whale. The members of Cherry Lemonade are trying to find their way into the zone. There's very few time left. Lily's trying to paint it, but they're not going to make it in time. And your mom is able to get a game barely. When it was one player alive, they managed to hold just enough to get the zone, to get the hold, and we are going to a game number nine. Oh my goodness. I was scared there for a moment because of power dropping into that bottom side, right? Went through the grates, was pushed so far back by the killer whale, couldn't have much of an impact on the game. I thought certainly there would be an opportunity for Limeade, this team that we've watched continue to play fast, play aggressive, play in your face, play to take fights on different sides of the map, that they'd be able to find ways to win that 4v3, even with, with power sitting uh, far out on that side, not able to play much of an impact to the zone at all. But no, it is your mom that's able to hold on, sending us to a game nine here. The exact same way I said at the beginning, have to imagine that this one was going the distance because these two teams were very evenly matched back at Shine. They are still evenly matched here in Ludi week three in the new year. Yeah, I remember we talked a bit before the stream about this and you said that you couldn't tell when it was going to be very even. I do not think you could have been more correct here as we are on the final match. It is a long range favorite stage, but it's also Clam Blitz. I don't think it could get much more neutral than this. What are the teams going to stick with? It looks like Limeade is locked day pretty much immediately, so I'd expect very little changes from them. Maybe a V Junior instead of a C Junior, but I don't think too much else is going to change. Meanwhile, your mom seems to be debating a bit more. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a 52 come out. This is a very strong 52 map, possibly the strongest in the game for that weapon. And that's something that I think could work quite well against the minimal amount of lethal bombs from Cherry Limeade. I guess that's a good point if you're thinking about 
you know, in paper, but you could say the same about how strong this map can be for crap, too, right? The crap has plenty of locations to sit. We've seen that they're not afraid to pull out the double splash o matic here as well. So, I don't know either way. I would be shocked not to see power on E-Leader, to your point, right? Very decently long range, don't have a lot of flanks to worry about, everything more in front of you, uh, and plenty of positions for that kind of a charger. Uh, and I don't think the bow is going to get that much value, right? In comparison to the E-Leader, you know, you think about the bow, maybe it's going to be useful for shredding crabs, but Lamia doesn't really play the crabs, but unless... Lily switched over to the Vanilla Junior for the Big Bubbler. There are so many factors, but who cares about all that? I'm here to see some exciting Splatoon, and boy, are we in for it. Yeah, as I predicted, the Vanilla Junior coming out. However, not much else seems to be there. Power is going to be sticking with the Charger, but Charger. not the E-Leader. We're going to be seeing the Vacuum come out for the first time in this set. And the comps are going to be fairly similar to what we've seen before outside of that. And here we go with this explosive Game 9. Power going to be trying to set up aggressively on the bridge. Finds an early kill onto Krim. Bubble comes out, but two players die. Not going to get too much out of it. They're going to break it before a jump from Pika can even think about getting there. And wow, what a nice start for your mom. They have a crab on the roof. They just need to get set up there, and they'll have the vacuum to do a nice push on top of the bridge. Looks like that's the plan. This was all well and good, but they didn't actually take the space that they have that was being generated by that crab. Didn't find a way to go underneath that bridge and start challenging things for Limeade. And now all of a sudden, it's Limeade breaking right back into mid. Power getting rushed down from multiple angles. Forced to pop this back as now Limeade has an opportunity to move in. You see the big bubbler going up and it's going to get actually a small bubbler this time around. Getting blocked by the top of that bridge. But nonetheless... The chaos continues to happen here, and it's going to mean that this one's going to see pretty much mid. We're going to see a football go in here, but Lime not able to find much off of it at all. Yeah, that's a score, but it's possibly the worst score you could get. It is, uh, it is technically the worst score you could get. It is only one power climb. That is the minimum. However, it's at least some points on the board here. However, I don't think it's going to be worth it. If Limeade goes down, the Tri-Strikes are coming out. It's just shiny. They're going to have to try to defend this. They're looking for a pick. Not able to find one. Opting to jump out. They're going to have the Killer Whale soon. Power aggressively vacuuming the corner to make sure these players go down. Going to be putting a shot by the bridge for good measure. And keeping the basket open. Showing he's no stranger to being more aggressive with that weapon. Shiny, I love you, but why are you peeking that? There's two other members there. Is your mum is able to maintain their presence for long enough to get just a few more claims to the basket, and that could be the difference. Push down to 39 here, and something that's going to be very lockout centric. I mean, all we have to see is your mum try to hold on to their bridge control, but already Lime looking to try to disrupt that. Here comes Pika, Ultra Stamp coming out. Two power claims going in the basket right now. They're going to get a few more claims on the board, and there's the lead for themselves. Two run situation there as Pika goes down. Krim goes down here as well, but notably that big bubbler still in position. Lily finally going to get pushed out of that bubbler with the double crab shooting from either side here. And we'll see if your mom can break back in the mid with the limited resources that they have. Very nice push from Limeade. Able to take the lead. Pika is wasting no time dropping into the back line. He sees a killer whale and he knows he can combo off that. And an immediate second score from oh, Limeade going to oh, no. come out. They're going to be able to get Wait a few minute. more they have points. There's plenty of blue ink in this area. If they hold on to this for a little while longer, they might be able to go for the knockout right here. Going back for a few more clams. There's Pika probably has a few more. These are the winning clams going in from Shiny right now, and they're going to take the set. Limeade sticks with their Shine performance and is able to knock off your mom here in Ludi. Wow, what a close set. Back and forth to the very end, but Limeade able to take the victory with a nice double clam push back to back to secure the win for them. Oh my goodness. Uh, 